Good morning. Today we are doing something that I've never done before, which always fills me with a little bit of apprehension, and that's getting a catamaran out of a dock by springing her out. Now, springing Ruby Rose out was pretty straightforward because we understood the boat. For those of you who don't know, springing is a technique where you use uh, a line from either the bow or the stern to a midpoint to lever the either the bow or stern out. It sounds complicated, it's actually pretty simple. The problem I have is that this boat is twice as wide as Ruby Rose and we don't have much space. We're kind of hemmed in fore and aft. So we're either gonna spring forward, which means what we'll do is we'll motor forward onto the, um, the forespring and swing the back out or do it in reverse and motor backwards onto the stern spring and spring the front out. As I said, it's something that I have to visualize in my mind. What we've got at the moment is we've got the wind blowing us on. So the wind is coming from over there. So we're gonna get blown straight back on. From our point of view, we have two bloody great engines in this and we can theoretically spin the boat round on itself. So that's, that's today, we're getting the boat out of the marina. I will radio uh, ahead and we'll get this sorted out now. Hamilton Island Marina, Hamilton Island Marina. Pirate Pete, Pirate Pete, over. Pirate Pete, Pirate Pete, go ahead to the Hamilton Island Marina. Yeah, good morning, Hamilton Island Marina. Um, we are on the pontoon and we just request some assistance with our lines to leave, over. I'll be there, Pirate Pete, not a problem. I'll send around the next available concierge to drop your lines this morning. Good morning everyone, beautiful day here in uh, Hamilton Island. We're just in the marina getting ourselves all organised and today we are heading to somewhere called Sandy Bay uh, on South Mole Island. There's some really nice walks to do on South Mole Island so that's why we're going there. Sandy Bay apparently is a lovely beach. Fingers crossed the weather holds out for us. It's not been cooperating lately so He's hoping that today we get a little bit of sunshine and at the very least no rain. Fingers crossed. We soon realised that springing off a dock in a catamaran was far easier than in a monohull. In fact, it was so easy I was left with nothing to do. Huge thank you to the wonderful staff at Hamilton Island Marina who are super helpful. And for those of you who don't know what springing off a dock means, well, this is an example of how to do it. We had one bow line attached on a slip around the cleat on the dock and it was held taut by the marina concierge as they call themselves. Although if we hadn't had the extra help then I could have done this myself while standing on the bow. Nick motored forward and as you can see the bow line works as a lever and simply kicks the stern of the boat away from the dock. So from there, since we're in a catamaran, Nick simply turned the boat around on its own axis by putting one engine into forward and the other into reverse. If we'd been on our old monohull Ruby Rose, we may have opted to simply reverse her out if we judged that there wasn't enough space to turn her around. Anyway, there you go. Springing off a dock sounds a little complicated, but it really is very easy. Thanks, mate. Thank you. That was easy. What a bloody joy that was. That was so easy. In Ruby Rose, that would have been a whole thing. There is a point where you're springing in a monohull where you literally lose weight. You have to keep either the nose or the stern kind of continually moving or you get caught in irons. So you literally get caught by the wind and blown yeah, back. Yeah. So it is really, really important to keep away on, which yeah. is hard because a lot of the time, the reason that you have to spring off is because you're hemmed in. Because you're either hemmed in yeah. or, you're, or you can't, you haven't you're got blown the, on. You're being blown on. Yeah, exactly. So you really do have to kind of weigh up your engine, your engine power against your whatever's like keeping you in there. Absolutely. So it is indeed raining. Hopefully it won't last too long. But I just wanted to quickly make a note of these helm seats while it is raining. Because I think it's one thing to be semi-exposed to a bit of wind or breeze, but I think it's another thing to be sitting here like getting wet. I'm damp because I've been bored um, putting the fenders away. What I would say is that with just the side clears, you can't sit on the helm seat if the wind is coming like from that direction which it is today. I could obviously go to the leeward side of the boat and helm um, and then I'd be totally dry but this is where all my instruments are so I kind of have to be here. I think that for longer passages like obviously at the moment I'm just kind of rounding an island and then 
you know, I can pop the autopilot on and sit almost wherever I want. We can even sit inside because we can turn the chart table around, or the chart plotter around, sorry. But on a longer passage, to me, this isn't a major issue because you've still got that lured helm seat. So I kind of like, yeah, it's like semi-exposed, but because you've got two helms, you always have a protected helm seat. What do you think? From my point of view, this is what I've said that, about having an internal nav station. Being able to realistically steer and sail a boat from inside. When you do have filthy weather, yes, you're gonna get wet here. It kind of like it's another, another tick in the box for you need an internal nav station with autopilot controls, a full set of nav gear, and- Good visibility. Good, good visibility and the ability to sit down yeah. so that you're not getting tired. episodes we don't actually have an anemometer on this boat which is really um, frustrating because we have to kind of guess the wind strength and that makes it really hard to make decisions about like number of reefs to put in whether to keep the sails down and put them up yeah all we can go on is like the forecast of what it was meant to be and the forecast has been underestimating the wind strength according to the the um, like charter companies the, their morning radio nets that they do they tell you kind of what the weather's doing and they've said a number of times that the recorded wind strength has been higher than the forecast and then when you're in like a cut or a channel like where we are right now you know the wind is almost certainly funneling through here so it's probably again stronger than the forecast so it's kind of really hard to make decisions about is that dinghy babe so it's really hard to make decisions about the sails when you don't have accurate um, wind readings and also when you're not familiar with the boat like if this were a boat that we're familiar with then it probably would matter a lot less Way behind me that's the Blue Sunday Islands <laughs> they're meant to be right there they're currently obscured by heavy heavy rain and it's cold like the temperatures dropped chilly rainy windy weather What's up? all right Ugh. you happy I'm, I'm kind of damp and wet. Where, where do you think you're going? Bed. <laughs> Back to bed. <laughs> Come to the wet Sundays, they said. <laughs> Tropical paradise, they said. Look at this. Grey cardigan. Bust out my thermal vest if this carries on. We're just lucky to be sailing. Yeah, so, okay. Just a couple of things to note. That strop, these strops are like so thick. And for me, they are extremely heavy um, and kind of cumbersome to pick up. So. I don't mind doing it, but I feel like it's kind of probably more sensible that I home and Nick pick up the strops because it takes me a while. And when you're getting blown around, then sometimes time is of the essence. However, I did it. So um, now, as you can see, Nick just won't pop the camera. This lake is really not a good situation because if the wind gets up and the swell gets up, then you can like have this come off the cleat in theory. So they asked us to put a safety line on, which I think is very sensible. Now that I'm on camera, I can't let them do the line. I'm getting wet. Yeah, I'm getting wet as well. You're not Ten there. seconds of like cracking, go and put the cat Too bad. <laughs> you can just hold out. I'm out here. I've been out here the whole time. You better be filming me doing a perfect bowling. In fact, I'll probably... Nah, it's all good. Actually, a really lovely um, bay <laughs> in the sunny wit Sundays. <laughs> now, I think it's time to go and have a cup of tea and a piece of fruitcake, don't you? And also, wit Sundays, whoever decided to put blue mooring balls is a lunatic. Here in the bays, they have free mooring balls, which is lovely, much appreciated. However, 
They have like these um, no anchoring zones, which are marked by white boys, and that's totally, that's a great thing, protecting the local environment. But the boys that you can actually tie up to are all blue and they're tiny. So you can't see them until you're almost like, I don't know, maybe like 100 meters away. And when you're coming into a bay and you know there's more in bulls somewhere, but you don't know if there is, there's any available, even with your binoculars, it's really, really hard to make out the boys until you're quite close. So I don't know why they made them blue. They could have made them like pink or I don't know, like fluorescent. I don't know. Oh God, freezy. So there are two other boys there and we're up nice and close and it's really hard to make them out even from here. Honestly, I reckon we have enough here for an Atlantic crossing. Oh, that's good. I'm happy with that. You know how paranoid I get that I'm going to go hungry. <laughs> Do we really need 13 jars of Nutella? I'm not, I'm not a big fan of Nutella yet. I know you're not, and that's a good thing because I am. So if you were, then you'd be a bad influence. My mother says that you're a stabilizing influence. <laughs> she does. She's like, since you met that girl, you've calmed down a lot. And I'm like, yes, mother. <sighs> this is nice. Mine's for the old days. Which old days? When we used to sail in Kent. Yeah, I don't mind a little bit of. Uh grey weather every now and again, it keeps things cosy. That's a nice fruit cake. Is it? Oh, oh funny looking bird over there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I fell for that. <laughs> you owe me a quarter, possibly a third of a fruit cake. I know you're sick of hearing us talk about how windy it is, but it really is very, very gusty. You can see, um, and I hope the camera can pick it up, that the white caps in the channel are like pretty significant. We're in a bay called Sandy Bay, tucked in, still got a lot of the wind. We're protected from the worst of it, but we still got a lot of it on the boat. <laughs> no real swirl, just a little bit of uh, chop from the wind, so it's all good. The beach here is a coral beach. I, when they said it's a coral beach, I thought it was like coral sand, so kind of just like sand, but maybe a bit rougher. But no, it's a beach made, like, it's coral. It's like dead white coral, um, completely, like mounds of it. It's, it's kind of crazy. Um, I wasn't expecting that much coral. And like, I'll look this up myself, but can someone tell me, how does the coral get here? Is that a stupid question? Like, does it just die naturally? Like, not because of humans, and then just like wash up on the beach? Is that? Is that as simple as that? It just seems like there's an incredible amount of de dead coral on the beach. Anyway, now we are gonna go on one of these little walks. It's starting to rain. Hopefully we'll be lucky and uh, it will stay nice and light for us because I don't have any wet weather gear on me. Probably an oversight. Look at that lovely twig. <laughs> what a lovely twig. So this island feels and looks very different to the other islands that we visited in the Wet Sundays. They had a much more kind of tropical or at least subtropical vibe going on, but this feels really grassy and it's hilly, but it's more, I don't know, the, the vegetation is completely different. Totally different flora and fauna. So you don't have those like dense trees, you've just got a lot more open grassy space. I mean, they're both beautiful. Wow, nice view. How nice is this? Yeah, it's amazing. It's not that old as the rings. I know. So here we are on South Mole. It is amazing. It's, we haven't seen another person. We've been hiking for a few hours. It's beautiful, it's verdant, it's clear, there's humidity, but it's just, it's stunning. It's one of the loveliest hikes we've done. Yeah, it is actually. So uh, yeah, really, really pleasant. There's a, a lake down there, there's a couple of hides. So imagine those twitches abound. And um, yeah, so we're back to, at the, at the apex of where we're gonna go today, we'll head back down the mountain and uh, go and see if we can retrieve our dinghy before it ends up on the rocks. Mm -hmm. 
So I hope you enjoyed that. The Whit Sundays are an absolutely fantastic sailing ground and it just feels so good to be back in the tropics. If you like that, feel free to subscribe, click down there, leave us a comment. The comments actually really make a difference to our channel as well as the thumbs up, thumbs downs and any interaction that you make with us all helps. So thanks for watching and we'll see you again next week. Goodbye.